Patricia, is this what you were expecting? Not really. I wasn't expecting uh, such a bumpy ride in. I'm not sure what I was thinking. We're kind of in the desert. Quite sandy and bumpy and dusty. It's the desert. Come on. I knew it would be like this. I didn't I didn't think such a civilized yeah. truck would be able to make it in here. I thought we'd switch to a car with like big tires like the one we saw. So. The other choice was doing this by camel for six days. What would you prefer? I think six days be too long, only because the whole experience of being one with the camel is nice, but after a while, everything looks the same. I think four hours, five hours is just the perfect experience. Now I know what it's like to be in a blender. <laughs> Our excellent driver over there. <laughs> Our excellent driver over there got us here in one piece and without getting stuck once. When you think there's nobody around, you start to see a tent in the distance and you start to see a camel and you wonder, oh, is this what I think it is? Are we there? And then look, look what you see around us. This is the, the base camp, I guess you'd call it. So we have all these tents here. One of them is ours. Yeah, but they're not just tents. They're like shacks with real beds and mattresses in them. Patricia, take us on the tour of ours. So this is, we got room number one. Come. So here we are. Look, we got two beds. Well, actually four beds. Two sides are ours. Look, even got a light. <laughs> a light. We have our own little makeshift table with towels and our own little teapot, and complete with dressing mirror too. How cool is that? That is way cool. And even look at the floors. They think of everything here. This is gonna be two thumbs up without even on the camels yet. We're gonna have some tea first because we're feeling a little parched from all that dust drive in, and then the camels are ready and waiting for us. One of them is uh, uh, already upright, and the other one is still kneeling down. But I'm sure once we approach, they'll start walking over to us. So. Oh. Woo! Oh! It's so quiet here. Is it quiet? It is so quiet. So we just watched the uh, sunset uh, on Erg Chigaga. 150 meter high sand dune on the edge of where you can logistically get here by automobile and then the endless expanse of sand dunes which you see behind us. So what do you think Patricia? What do you what are you going to take away from here? It's beautiful. I mean, sitting up on this sand dune and just looking for miles and miles of sand dunes, every shape, every different size. The way that they've been molded and carved by the wind, just amazing. You just feel so small. Humbling experience. Beautiful. I mean, the sand is the way that it just filters down the side when you touch it. It is just so calming and peaceful. It is epically quiet. Yes. Miles and miles and miles away from anything, too. Yeah. The moon is uh, just coming up. You can see the colors in the sky. They're just radiant. One lone star up there. Did you make a wish? I made a wish. I'm not going to tell you what it was. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. we got to get back to camp before it gets too dark and we lose our way. Bye.
Hey, Patricia, could you be any happier right now? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. Hi. <laughs> so we just uh, finished breakfast, and uh, <clears throat> I would have liked more time here. So I think my advice is, I don't know if two days is too much, but they, it sounds like they do have other activities, uh, hikes and lunches in the desert. But unfortunately, our time restraints just said one night. What are your thoughts, Patricia? Same. Breakfast is amazing. I'm having this big puree on this baked bread in a clay oven. Mm. And they even have coffee here too, so that's a, a bonus. If you call this camping, this is like the five star of camping. <laughs> Without a doubt, a must, a must on the list when you visit Morocco.